Thank you for the opportunity to discuss our preferred technique for proximal tibial osteotomy, the clinical and radiographic results using the eye balance system. These are my disclosures. I initially used to perform lateral closing wedge osteotomies. Now I've converted to a medial opening wedge osteotomy for almost all cases of varus malalignment. In the past, osteotomy was associated with numerous complications, including undercorrection or overcorrection, persistent malalignment, loss of correction, neurologic or vascular injury, tourniquet palsy and compartment syndrome, in addition to very catastrophic problems like fracture into the plateau of the tibia, delayed union or non-union, thromboembolic complications, infection, persistent pain, and actually difficult total knee arthroplasty exposure with the lateral closing wedge technique. In my practice, osteotomy indications are increasing, not decreasing. I still perform osteotomies for unicompartmental arthritis, often in conjunction with ACL or PCL reconstruction, meniscus transplant, and articular cartilage restoration with osteochondral autograft transfer, osteochondral allograft transfer, and actually cell-based cartilage restoration procedures. The eye balance medial opening wedge technique was developed by these pioneering surgeons at Arthrex, and I think it has numerous advantages. The exposure is familiar to most surgeons. We're used to harvesting grafts in this location, performing ACL reconstruction. It's also very versatile. It can be extended later for additional surgical procedures. My preferred exposure is a vertical incision centered between the posterior border of the tibia and the tibial tubercle. You expose layer one, the sartorius fascia, incise that layer, and then transect the superficial medial collateral ligament. And I prefer this L-shaped incision with the transection distally. We can then elevate the MCL and then lay it back down afterwards and retension the MCL. This is important. Not only does it provide a wonderful exposure to perform the osteotomy, but research has shown that in order to actually uh, decrease forces on the compartment, you need to, in addition to correcting the alignment, release the distal MCL. And this is performed as part of the eye balance exposure. And this is just an example of combined osteotomy with ACL reconstruction. And you can see how the MCL and the sartorius fascia then are closed right over the top through a rather small incision. This system is also instrumented for safety. It has a jig alignment, which uses this hinge pin and a patellar tendon protector, a neurovascular shield, forming what we call is a safety envelope. It does utilize fluoroscopic guidance. And there's two key points. Once you get this jig positioned, as long as the medial aspect locator and the anteromedial tab are on bone, it is very simple to perform. So this shows a lateral fluoroscopic view, making sure that the uh, instrumentation is lined up properly. Then we ensure that the hinge pin hole is sufficiently distal to the lateral tibial plateau and medial to that lateral cortex, 1.25. That allows us to ensure that this would never happen. This is a case of an opening wedge osteotomy where there was a fracture into the lateral tibial plateau. The hinge pin hole prevents this potential complication. Also, there's no change in the tibial slope. As you know, there has been concern in the past with medial opening wedge osteotomies altering the tibial slope. We want to be able to provide the desired valgus correction in the coronal plane but also a neutral tibial slope in the sagittal plane. Increased posterior tibial slope will cause excessive ACL graft strain, 
and an increased anterior tibial slope will cause excessive PCL graft strain. So we want to perform an osteotomy without altering that slope. And in the past, this was an issue because there was a preserved posterolateral lateral hinge. We operate from anteromedial, and sometimes it was difficult to fully release the posterolateral lateral cortex, and so you would open more anteriorly, causing increased posterior tibial slope. With our hinge pin hole and with this technique, we have a lateral hinge, and so we can open medially and not increase that posterior slope. Also, the eye balance implant is designed so that it is thicker posteriorly than anteriorly. It's an inset peak implant. The peak has a modulus of elasticity, which is similar to bone. And I've noticed consistently that these patients have very little pain. And I think it may be related to the fact that it's an inset peak implant. So we don't have a big metal plate outside the bone with metal screws, which I think are much more painful. And this is just an example of how it sets inside the bone flush with the cortex. Now, I haven't had much experience converting eye balance osteotomy cases into total knees, but when I have, it's actually been very easy. It's the same exposure. You just extend your incision proximally, do your standard preparation, and in this uh, case example, I just completely ignored the plate. I drilled right through it and punched right through it, and uh, I used a stem extension maybe I didn't need to, and all you can see is a little uh, radiographic evidence of that peak implant, but it almost looks like a normal knee. Now, if we look at the literature, there's not a whole lot of evidence. Uh, the Get Good article looked at 32 patients, and it was mainly to make sure there wasn't uh, increased complications with the technique. And they concluded that it's safe and efficacious in the short term, similar to the second generation PUDU system. Uh, we actually uh, have published our results. Uh, this is a preliminary series looking at the eye balance system to determine uh, healing rates and also to look at if there was a change in the posterior tibial slope or patellar height. And I think that uh, this case uh, series, this level four evidence has been very positive. So we retrospectively reviewed 25 patients who underwent a valgus producing proximal medial tibial opening wedge osteotomy using the eye balance system. We looked at age, gender, the indication for the procedure, and then we reviewed the radiographs looking at preoperative and postoperative anteroposterior, posterior lateral and full length standing views. We determined the tibial slope by three different methods, anterior tibial cortex, posterior tibial anatomic axis, and the posterior tibial cortex methods. We looked at patellar height with three different measurements, Insol Salvati, Blackburn Peel, and Keton Deschamps. We determined the weight-bearing line by the uh, method using the full-length standing radiographs, where we draw a line from the femoral head and the talus to the 62% coordinate. We measure the resultant angle, and then we subtract for lateral joint space difference and adjust for magnification. This determines our preoperative plan. We can then measure the mechanical axis, the weight-bearing line ratio, and then compare preoperative to postoperative radiographs. This case series had 11 females, 14 males, mean age of 38 years with a range of 14 to 61. We followed them up for a mean of 35 weeks, all to complete union, which is between 12 and 123 weeks. The indications for surgery were genuverum, plus typically medial compartment degenerative arthritis, but also a myriad of other problems, including osteochondral defects, ligament insufficiency, um, absent menisci, medial femoral condyle osteonecrosis, and four combined indications. Here you can see a typical uh, eye balance case. We had 100% union rate in this case series with zero complications or reoperations, and we learned that tibial slope was not affected. Here you can see the three different measurements of tibial slope, and there are no significantly 
uh, altered slopes in any of these patients. We did see a very small decrease in patellar height, but this was not felt to be clinically significant. Here you can see with those three methods, very minute changes in patellar height. We had a 38% undercorrection and a 0% overcorrection using the definition greater than 10% difference compared to our targeted weight-bearing line ratio based on our preoperative plan. And here you can see the pre-op compared to the post-operative changes. We looked into this uh, small group of undercorrected patients, and we found that we tended to undercorrect if the primary indication was medial compartment osteoarthritis, or if they had a more pronounced uh, malalignment prior to surgery with a mechanical axis of greater than six degrees varus. So now we will tend to overcorrect a little further in those folks that have these two indications. If we look at the literature review with other techniques, the accuracy of uh, realignment osteotomy is actually not very good. This series by Marty had a 31% undercorrection and a 19% overcorrection. So this technique actually fared much better, um, the eye balance technique much better than uh, the Marty series. They also had an increased mean posterior slope of about 2.7 degrees. Obviously, there's some limitations from this uh, level four series. We have no comparison group of osteotomy patients using alternate techniques. We did not look at clinical outcomes, but we plan to do that in the future when we have longer follow-up. This was a radiographic study only, uh, but we did document 100% union rate. I'll show a quick case. This is a 31-year-old patient with medial femoral condyle osteochondritis desiccans. Uh, diagnosed at age 13. She underwent uh, previous surgical procedures uh, with grade four chondromalacia in the medial condyle. She had persistent pain with all daily activities and no mechanical symptoms. She had genuverum and antalgic gait, medial joint line tenderness, and a stable knee. Here you can see her radiographs. You can see the medial joint space narrowing. You can see her varus mechanical axis with her weight-bearing line passing through the medial plateau margin. So in this case, we elected to perform a medial femoral condyle osteochondral allograft transplant combined with a valgus-producing proximal medial tibial opening wedge osteotomy utilizing the eye balance system. Radiographic appearance of her medial femoral condyle with complete loss of articular cartilage also notice the intralesional osteophytes, which often happens after microfracture. So this is not a good case, in my opinion, for an actual cell-based cartilage restoration, but I prefer to use osteochondral allograft transplantation to restore joint contour, subchondral bone, and viable articular cartilage. Her medial meniscus was intact, but there were some changes on the tibial plateau articular surface. Standard preparation of our osteochondral allograft. Here you can see the recipient bed. We're preparing the uh, donor osteochondral graft. Here's the appearance after implantation. So we're able to restore that joint surface contour. Arthroscopic view at multiple different angles. angles. And I think this is the best approach for, for this young woman. It's all done through the same incision because we can do an arthrotomy, access the medial femoral condyle, perform the osteotomy in one setting. Here's the uh, post-operative radiographs showing the correction and the osteochondral allograft in place. Four years later, she has no pain, no effusion, excellent range of motion, no joint line tenderness, very happy patient, hopefully prolong the life of her knee. This is a comparison of her preoperative and four-year standing radiographs. You can see complete healing of the osteotomy which is a small radiolucent area with the peak implant. So in my opinion, uh, proximal tibial osteotomy remains a viable option for many of our young active patients. The eye balance technique is well instrumented and safe. There is no effect in our experience on tibial slope and no clinically significant effect on patellar height. The coronal plane undercorrection has been associated with uh, medial compartment osteoarthritis 
and preoperative mechanical axis greater than six degrees varus. Therefore, I will now slightly overcorrect patients with those indications, adjusting the preoperative plan. Thank you.